This lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes and will be about the relation between Cartier divisors and the Picard group of invertible sheaves. So you recall that last lecture we defined um, a map from Cartier divisors to V divisors, which was an isomorphism for reasonably well behaved schemes. And similarly, we have a map between the Cartier divisor classes and the Vey divisor classes. And what we're going to do this lecture is construct a homomorphism from the Cartier divisor classes to the Picard group of invertible sheaves, or more or less equivalently line bundles. And this map here will in practice usually be an isomorphism. Um, so let's just see how this construction works for Riemann surfaces. So suppose um, C is a Riemann surface, which we may as well take to be compact. And um, it has a divisor D um, consisting of uh, some of points with multiplicities. And we're going to um, make this into an invertible subsheaf of the sheaf of meromorphic functions. Let's call the sheaf K of meromorphic functions. So um, how do we do this? Well, um, it just corresponds uh, to the sheaf. Um, this sheaf will be called L of D. And um, sections of L of D over an open set are just going to correspond to meromorphic functions such that um, F plus D is greater than or equal to zero. So I'll just remind you what this means. Um, if we've got a divisor, sum of N I P I being greater than or equal to zero, this just means that all N I are greater than or equal to zero. So these are the positive divisors. F is the divisor of zeros of F, where as usual, poles count as negative zeros. So what does this mean? It says that if D is sum of N I P I, then F is allowed a pole of order at most N I at P I, or a zero of order at least minus N I if N I is less than zero. Um, so um, first of all, uh, this is kind of obviously a line bundle because locally um, it's isomorphic with the sheaf of coordinate functions because multiplication by the meromorphic function f gives a local isomorphism. Um, now what we want to do is to copy this for schemes. Uh, for schemes X. Um, so K is going to be the sheaf of total quotient rings, which you remember for X integral is more or less um, the, um, the, 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 the constant sheaf of the function field of x, which most of the time is what we will do. So what we do is we want to take a Cartier divisor and we want to turn this Cartier divisor into an invertible subsheaf of um, k. And um, the Cartier divisor means we cover x by open subsets ui, so you can think of you know, ui, uj, 
UK and so on. And on each of these, we have a function fi. So we've got fi on ui and fj on uj and fk on uk. So fk is a section of um, uh, the total quotient um, sheaf of ui. So you can think of it as being something like a meromorphic function on ui. Um, and fi over fj has to be a unit um, of um, KUI intersection UJ. And we take the subsheaf. So, so, so L of U is going to be the subsheaf of K of functions G in uh, K, given by functions G of K in UI, so that so G of FI is um, regular on UI. So um, if G has a zero of order, so, so if Fi has a zero of order three, say this means roughly that G is allowed to have a pole of order three. And again, Fi is an isomorphism from L of D to the, 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 the sheaf of regular functions on Ui. So locally, this sheaf is is isomorphic to the sheaf of regular functions. So it's an invertible sheaf. Um, so this gives a map from Cartier divisors to the Picard group. And there are some easy things to check, which um, I'm not going to go through in detail. First of all, it's a homomorphism. Um, second, um, it's um, injective from Cartier divisor classes to the Picard group. So to a Cartier divisor has image zero in the Picard group if and only if it's um, a principal um, Cartier divisor. Um, and thirdly, the image is the subgroup of the Picard group of um, invertible sheaves that are isomorphic to a subsheaf of the sheaf of um, total quotient rings. Um, it's usually an isomorphism. from um, CACL onto the Picard group. Um, um, the counter that there are some counterexamples where there are elements of the Picard group that aren't in the, the image of a Cartier divisor, but they tend to be a bit weird. Um, for, for instance, there's one example found by Kleinman, which starts off with Hironaka's example of a non-projective three-dimensional manifold we discussed earlier and fiddles around with it a bit and produces an example where, where this map isn't on to. So you're sort of unlikely to encounter examples where this map isn't an isomorphism unless you're searching very hard for counterexamples. Um, in particular, if X is integral, then the map from CACL to the Picard group is an isomorphism. And uh, this isn't difficult to see. Um, um, since X is integral, the sheaf K is just the constant sheaf of the field of um, um, functions of X, which I'll also denote by K. I mean, sometimes people denote the sheaf by a calligraphic K, and but I'm not very good at drawing calligraphic letters, so I won't bother. I just use K for both of them. Um, and suppose L is invertible. So suppose it's an invertible sheaf, then, um, 
this means um, we can cover x with open sets ui so that l on ui is um, isomorphic to o on, on ui. This is the definition of being invertible. And this means that k tensored um, with l is isomorphic to k on each ui. Um, um, so um, k tensored with l is constant on each ui. This means it's a constant sheaf, which means on each subset of ui, it has the same value, except, of course, for the empty subset. Um, so this implies it is constant on x, as x is irreducible. So what's going on here is if we pick any open subset u of x and any smaller open subset v, then the values of this constant sheaf on u is the same as the value of the constant sheaf on v. So um, at least for sets of the open cover. So, so as it's a sheaf, um, it takes the same value on every open set of u. Um, so um, L tensor with K is actually just isomorphic with K on the whole of X because it has the same, same value. Um, you, you can identify its value on each open set. So this gives a map from L to L tensor K where you just map L to L tensor one. So L is a subsheaf of K because this is isomorphic to the constant sheaf K. Um, so um, in order to illustrate a bit of this, let's calculate the Picard group of projective space, um, which as we've seen is the same as the Cartier divisor classes of projective space and is the same as the um, they divide the classes of projective space, and we'll see that it's actually isomorphic to Z. Um, so you remember we've actually found line bundles O of N for N in Z, and all we want to do is to check that every invertible sheaf on the Picard group is isomorphic to one of these line bundles or invertible sheaves or whatever you want to call them. Um, so first of all, let's take a look at finding the Picard group of any scheme X. Let's cover X by open sets UI. And suppose L is an invertible sheaf. And suppose it's trivial on each UI. That means it's isomorphic to the uh, sheaf of coordinate functions on each ui. Well, then we can define L by, by um, uh, giving the isomorphism between the regular functions on here and the regular functions on here for each open set i. So L is defined by elements b i j in O of u i intersection u j star. So we, we pick a a unit of the regular functions on for, for each intersection. So this gives an isomorphism from O of ui restricted to ui intersection uj to O of uj restricted to ui intersection uj. And L is kind of formed by gluing all these things together using, using these units bij. So bij the set of numbers called BIJ is called a one co-chain. And there are some non-zero, so that there are some compatibility conditions on them because if we go from UI to UJ and then from UJ to UK and then from UK to UI, we must get back to where we started. So we see that BIJ, BJK, BKI must be equal to one. Um, in order for all these gluings to be compatible. 
And this condition says that Bij is a one co-cycle, more or less the definition of a one co-cycle. Um, so um, this line bundle might be trivial. So suppose we pick some element AI um, on each UI. So we pick an element AI, which is going to be um, an, a unit of the regular functions on UI. And then um, if we multiply the something in the coordinate functions of AI in, by AI, we don't actually change the invertible sheaf um, optoisomorphism. So if Bij is equal to AI AJ to minus one, then the corresponding line bundle is trivial. So if Bi has this property, we say that Bij is a one co-boundary. Say so it's the, think of this as being the co-boundary of, of these um, elements Ai. So um, we find that invertible sheaves trivial on all the ui is just isomorphic to the one co-cycles over the one co-boundaries. And now to find all invertible sheaves, is a sort of uh, direct limit of this over all coverings. Um, we won't actually need to take this direct limit because we'll actually start with a covering on which all invertible sheaves are trivial. But what we've actually defined is the first check cohomology group. So the first check cohomology group arises very naturally if you try and classify line bundles over, uh, 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 over, a, over a scheme or for that matter, over any ringed space. Um, line bundles are, or invertible sheaves are classified exactly by the elements of this direct limit, which is more or less by definition, the, the check cohomology group. Um, so now let's get, get back to uh, the Picard group of Pn. Well, we know that Pn is covered by n plus one copies of the affine space An. And we notice that the Picard group of An is just zero. Um, and the reason for this is that we know the Picard group of An is isomorphic to the Ve divisor class group of a n by what we've said before, because a n is locally factorial and notarian and integral and all the rest of it. And we worked out this. This is isomorphic to z because the coordinate ring is um, k x1 up to x n. And this is a unique factorization domain. So we show that for any unique factorization domain, the, the, the vial, um, the, the, the group of Ve divisor classes was just um, trivial. Sorry, that's not a Z, that's a zero. Um, and similarly, if you've got any unique factorization domain, you can see that the Picard group of that unique factorization domain vanishes. So now we can cover Pn by these ANs, and on um, if L is a line bundle, then L on each AN is trivial because all line bundles on affine space are trivial. So we don't need to go around taking a direct limit or anything. We, we, we can just calculate the one co-cycles modulo, the one co-boundaries for this particular covering by affine um, spaces. So let's take a look at what's going on. Here we've got 
spaces U I, U J, and U K. And um, we need to remember what the ring of coordinate functions on U I is. Well, O of U I can be identified with K X naught up to X N. And then we invert X I, and then we take the degree zero pieces of it. And you remember this is actually just a just another polynomial ring, but we're writing it in this funny form because this makes it easier to go between these different coverings. And we want the elements B, I, J to be in the units of um, O of U, I intersection U, J. And this is uh, just given by the units of uh, K, X naught up to X N. Now we have to invert X I and X J and take the degree zero pieces. And the units of this are all of the form um, C times X I over X J to the N I J, let's call it C I J, where C I J is um, a non-zero element of our field and N I J is just an integer because these are the only degree zero units of this ring. So um, Bij is given by, by these numbers here. Now we apply the one co-cycle condition, which says that Bij, Bj, K, Bki equals one. And we find Xi over Xj, Bnij times Xj over Xk, the njk times xk over xi to the nki times, uh, hang on, there were some c's, cij, cjk, cki is equal to one. And there's an immediate consequence of this. You can see that nij equals njk equals nki. So all the nijs are equal to say um, some number n. Um, I guess I'm using that for the dimension of projective space as well, which I shouldn't have done. Um, now we've, we've still got these constants c, i, j to get rid of, um, but those are easy to get rid of. Um, so here we've got these numbers, it's u1, i, u, j, and here we've got a number c, i, j, uh, C, J, K, and so on. And what we do is we're, we're, we're going to eliminate the C, I, J's by showing that they're actually a co-boundary. So what we do is we set A naught equals one, and we set A, J, a J equals C, J naught, um, where C, J naught equals C naught J to minus one, of course. Um, and then the fact that C I J C J K C K I equals one just implies that C I J is equal to A I A J to the minus one. Um, so um, C I J is a one co-boundary And, and you can just remove it um, because multiplying a one co-cycle by one co-boundary doesn't affect its line bundle. So um, the line bundle L is given by the one co-cycle Bij equals Xi over Xj to the n for some integer n in Z. So the Picard group of P, I shouldn't really call it Pn because I've overused N, Pr, is just isomorphic to Z. Um, so uh, this one co-cycle obviously corresponds either to the sheaf On or possibly to the sheaf O minus N, and I can never remember which way around they go, and it's easy to make a sign error with this, depending on which way around you put these Xi's and J's, so I'm not going to bother. Um, okay, next lecture, we will look at the Picard group and 
the various divisor class groups for curves and Dedekind domains.